Hey everyone, I'm Noah and welcome to Blackthorn Prod, a channel focused on the art of game creation. In this Unity and C Sharp tutorial, we will take a look at how to make destructible terrain. So as you can see, I have a player character moving around a simple environment, made up of these basic black squares. This same player can also shoot out with a weapon black projectiles that upon colliding with a piece of the environment will damage it and ultimately destroy it. On top of showing you how to put into place this destructible terrain system that you can of course use to blast to pieces much more complex looking environments than a bunch of squares, I'll give you an easy look at how to make a bomb for extra exploding fun. With that said, let's jump right into Unity and take a look at this basic scene. All it has for now are the black squares making up the environment and this player that can move with the arrow keys and shoot bullets. If you're not sure how to make such a player controller, you can take a look at this tutorial I did a while back on the topic. As for the projectile, it basically detects the cursor's position as soon as it is spawned and shoots towards that same position, ultimately destroying itself when it has reached its destination. To destroy our terrain, we must detect when the projectile actually collides with a piece of the environment. So I'll select all my squares and add a 2D box collider to them. I'll then grab my projectile prefab and add a 2D circle collider to it, set to trigger, as well as a 2D rigid body set to kinematic, because we don't want it being affected by gravity or external forces. Note that this rigid body is not optional. For the engine to detect collisions, at least one of the two objects needs a rigid body. Now that that's done, I'll create a new c -sharp script called, for example, Destructible Envy, and add it to all pieces of my environment. In it, I'll create a public int variable called health, which will basically dictate how tough that particular piece of the environment is to destroy. And in my update function, I'll create an if statement checking whether health is less or equal to zero. If it is, then I'll destroy the game object, in other words, piece of the environment with this script attached to it. I've also gone ahead and made a simple particle effect for when the terrain destroys itself. So I'll also spawn that when health reaches zero to make things feel more satisfying. This is also a good moment to add some screen shake if you like that sort of thing. Awesome, with that done I'll now take a look at my projectile script and get that to blast our terrain to pieces by detecting some collisions. I would like our projectile to have some area of effect. In other words, give the player the satisfaction of finding a powerful weapon capable of shooting projectiles that destroy huge chunks of the environment. But first things first, I'll type on trigger enter 2D and in the parentheses type collider 2D other. This function will be called as soon as the projectile collides with something. And if that something has the environment tag, which we will add in just a moment to all our squares, then I want my projectile casting out an invisible circle which will detect all objects with colliders inside of it and deal them a certain amount of damage. To do so, I need to make an array of type collider 2D that I'll call objects to damage and set that equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle all. In the parentheses, I now need to state a position for the circle. So my projectile's current position and a radius. Obviously, instead of hard coding this value, I'll go ahead and make a public float variable called area of effect and paste that right in here. We can also add in a layer mask here, which is very useful if you don't want all parts of your environment being destructible. Though I don't need this in this case, I'll go ahead and do it anyway, so you get the full picture. So I'll create a public variable of type layer mask called what is destructible and paste that as third parameter of my overlap circle all function. I'll now loop through all the objects my circle has detected and deal them all a certain amount of damage. So I'll create another variable, this one public of type int called damage. I'll now make a for loop, quickly generating the syntax by double tapping the tab key on my keyboard and get the code inside this loop to run a number of times equal to the number of elements in my object to damage array. And so now all I need to do is grab the environment component attached to those game objects and reduce their health with my damage value. Lastly, I'll make sure to destroy my projectile and get it to spawn some little particle effect so things feel cooler. One last optional but very 
very useful trick to keep in mind before jumping inside of Unity is the onDraw Gizmo selected function. Like on Trigger Enter 2D, make sure to type the name of this function exactly the same as I have here, or it won't work. Inside this function, I'll then give a color to my gizmo, for example red, and give my gizmo some shape. I'll choose the wireframe sphere, which will best represent the project tiles area of effect, and give it a position and a radius, which of course will be the area of effect. To clear all confusions, this function will basically get Unity to draw out a wireframe sphere as soon as I select the project tile in the scene view. This will be really useful to measure and choose how powerful we want our project tile to be. What impact should it have on the environment? With all that done, we can hop back into Unity, select all the environment pieces and type in some health value. For example, 1, as well as drag and drop my particle destroy effect in the corresponding empty slots. Also, don't forget to create and add to those environment pieces an environment tag, or this if statement will never return true. I'll now type in one damage for my projectile. In other words, one blast will be enough to reduce my terrain to smithereens, since all blocks only have one HP. I'll now actually go ahead and drag and drop my projectile into my scene view, and play around with the area of effect value. You'll notice this cool red gizmo scaling up or down, depending on that value. I now have a clear and funky indication of my projectile's damage impact. Before hitting play and testing this out, I'll create a new layer called Destructible, and also add that to all my squares. Grabbing my projectile prefab, I'll set what is destructible equal to that newly made layer. If, however, I wanted this piece of the environment to not be affected by the blast, all I would need to do is remove the destructible layer and set it back to default. So hopefully you see the use of this whole layer thing. And now I can press play and eat away at my environment. Excellent. Before wrapping up the video, let's make a bomb. I'll use this simple red circle sprite for graphic with a shaky ready to explode animation and add to it a bomb C sharp script. This script will look similar in many ways to my projectile script, as you'll see in just a moment. I'll start by making a public float variable called timer, and in my update function, check whether or not its value is less or equal to zero. If it is, then this bomb is ready to explode. If not, then I'll gradually reduce its value. And there we go, all I now need to do is copy and paste this whole overlap circle all and for loop piece of code from the projectile script and add it to my bomb, making sure to add an area of effect and damage variable to it too. I can also copy and paste this onDraw gizmo selected function so that I can more clearly tweak the bomb effect radius. I'll also destroy the bomb once it's dealt its damage and spawn some effects. Heading over to my player script, which for now simply handles movement and spawning projectiles, I'll make a new public game object variable called bomb and spawn that when the player hits space for example. Let's now give our bomb a damage, area of effect, and timer value in the inspector, as well as drag and drop a destruction particle effect. I'll turn the bomb into a prefab, delete it from my scene view, and drag and drop that newly made prefab inside of the player's bomb empty slot. I can now press play, hit space to spawn a bomb, and wait for it to explode. And when it does, its large area of effect explosion will blast to pieces my fragile terrain. One final note before wrapping up, if you wanted your game to have more complex destructible terrain than a bunch of squares, you would have to simply make up your asset out of several sprites. For example, this tree could have individual branches. From an art point of view, the challenge is to make these assets look seamless and believable, not like some poorly cut up jigsaw. And that that marks the end of the video. I really hope you found it helpful and will stay tuned for a lot more here at Blackthorn Prod. Recently I set up a Patreon page where you can help me out making more and better content by donating a monthly payment which you can cancel at any time, like these top supporters. If you don't feel like it though or really don't have a dollar to spare in making the game dev world a better place, then subscribing and liking the video would be an awesome support. With that said, I thank you so much for watching, stay tuned, cheers!